Good morning, guys. We are taking El Cefe down to Orlando. We're going to go pick up the parts from paint for the Alice Miata. So uh, Adam actually got them done like a week and a half ago. I just haven't had time to run down there. So we're running down there today so we can pick those up so we can start getting them on the Miata, the overfenders and the wing and all that good stuff. And then also a bunch of Subaru parts for my buddy in Canada. And they've been sitting in my old house for like a week or so. So we're going to go pick those up so we can finish it up. We can register it and start driving it around and working out all the kinks. So lots of exciting stuff today. We're going to hit the road because I'm already running a little late. Told them I'd be there at 11 and it's like 940 and it's an hour and a half. So see you guys on the road. <laughs> Man, I've gotten so freaking spoiled driving automatic cars. Driving a stick shift car in stop and go traffic is the freaking worst. Forget how annoying it is. I've thought about eventually ending up with like a manual tow rig. And I've always thought like it'd probably really suck in traffic. Cause like getting started with a trailer has got to take a little bit of work. And uh, yeah, no, it would be terrible. <laughs> it would be terrible cause this sucks. Not sucks, it's not that bad. I'm just so used to like my automatic, like chilling, lean back one foot, put my other foot wherever I want. It's a lot less work. <laughs> also, another interesting thing, pretty much lately, if I'm on the highway at all, it's because I'm hooked up to the enclosed and I'm, I'm towing. So I've gotten so used to what it's like to drive like that with a trailer and taking forever to stop and accelerate and whatever, that like I feel, it feels so nice to be in a zippy car where I can just like, pass people and accelerate quickly if I need to and whatever. It's like such a totally different thing. And I feel like a lot of people who drive cars on the highway don't understand what it's like to drive a truck with a big trailer on the highway, let alone a freaking semi. I wish there was like part of the driver's license test was everyone that got their license had to drive a truck and a trailer in traffic. And then maybe they would understand a little better why there's gaps there and why, you know, you gotta let a semi over if they're gonna get caught up because it's gonna kill them if they lose speed going up a hill and whatever. So anyway, I'm bored, I'm rambling. We'll be at Adams hopefully soon. I don't know how long this traffic's gonna last, but I'll see you guys there either way. All right, we made it here. An El Cefe, check it out. We have our parts painted. I have my sunglasses on so I can barely see them, but we got our wing, we got our rear overs, and we got spare front fenders. So this is perfect because our rear quarters kept pretty messed up the past couple rounds of Lone Star. And we got that new exhaust tip, so this is gonna suit that a lot better. I think having the overs, having the wing will make the uh, rear bumper look a lot better because the rear bumper kind of looks out of place right now, but there's not really any other options. So I think these will really kind of complete the look of the car. So I'm really excited to get those on. Huge shout out to Adam yeah, man. for getting What's them up, done. Bro? Did you film any? You probably didn't film any videos, did you? Um, I did a video of painting it. It's just one video. Okay. It's a couple back in the upload, so, but it's there. Okay, it's there, so, so he filmed the video of it. Yep. Check it out on his channel, Bodhi Vision. I'll put the link below. And then you finished the Hellcat Miata. I saw that. It looks yeah. sweet, dude. dude. Did you see it at Hoonigan? Yeah. That video just went live. Dude, yeah. they destroyed it. Dude. Yeah, I saw that. So I'm I saw gonna it. Be... You got to fix it now? Yes. Ha! <laughs> that will be coming on my yeah, channel. That's funny. Yeah, it looks really good though. I really like, I don't, I'm not a fan of orange cars. I mean, I have an orange car, but I'm not normally a fan of orange cars and it looks really good. So anyway, before I leave though, uh, cause we got a lot to do today, we're gonna do a little podcast. Yeah man, something I've been working a lot on. I got a couple episodes kind of in the pipeline, so to say, and my plan is to upload one every single Sunday morning. Just another way for me to put out content. And Are you gonna do it on people. YouTube and like a podcast or yeah. just podcast? How, how does that work? Well, I'm doing it on YouTube mainly. Okay, that's what I figured. Views. Yeah, right. I might upload like the raw audio file to SoundCloud or Apple Music, something along those Okay. Lines. We'll see, that's all to be figured out. You're one of the first guests. So oh yeah, you. this is exciting. I've, I've honestly wanted to do this forever because I like talking, as you guys know, I end up rambling on and on in my videos. So eventually I'd like to make a podcast. I just don't know if I could make one that would be interesting enough, but maybe one day. And it's another way to make a video. And that's what yeah. we do. We try to make videos. So this yeah, is and it's fun. To not have to be so sweaty and get an upload out. Yeah, <laughs> true. And just like, it, it, there's a lot of times where there's a lot of information that I try to pack in to you guys, like to a video for you guys of like stuff that's going on and plans and get your thoughts and it's hard to pack all that in in a video that I'm doing other stuff. Some people don't want to see it. Some people do want to hear more. So it's, it's kind of tough. So maybe I'll work on doing something like that too, but we're going to do this real quick. It's going to be like in two weeks or something. Okay, it's two so weeks. We'll Check it out. We'll let you guys know when it's live. Yeah, remind me and I'll yeah. tell you guys when it's live. Um, but yeah, we got after this, I got to run to my old house where my Subaru parts got shipped to pick those up. So we'll pick this back up then. It's funny, pulling out of my old neighborhood, I still remember all the routes to miss the bumps. There are a couple though that I forgot about. <laughs> Some real big ones. We've been uh, rub-a-dub-dubbing through here. Oh God, oh God. Okay, we're good. <laughs> but 
but it's just it's just funny. I remember everyone that drove through here would be like, oh, it's so bumpy. And I'm like, dude, you just gotta take the right path. It's fine. And here I am like freaking monster trucking through stuff. <laughs> All right, getting back on the road, gonna head home and get to work. Woo, yay. Made it home. NLSFA did good, he did good. It's definitely a he. Got all our parts in here. This thing's a really good utility vehicle. The trunk is huge and we got Subaru parts, which we'll get into in a day or so. I'm not sure if tomorrow I'm gonna work on the 7.3 Power Stroke on 24's cooling system. <laughs> I don't know why people get so upset about that. Like, it's just the title because I don't have a name for it. Anyway, I don't know if I'm gonna work on the cooling system on that tomorrow or the Subaru. We'll decide. Let me know what you think we should do. Anyway, I'm gonna get these parts out and start uh, getting them on the car. It's gonna be a bit of a process. You guys have never installed over fenders or seen them installed. You obviously have to cut the wheel arch out so that you can make use of the extra width, otherwise the tire would just hit the metal fender. But on top of that, we gotta basically cut the inner fender liner, bend it up, and then weld it back so we don't get a ton of smoke just like pouring into the cab. So just, just one of those things. It'll take a little bit of time. So anyway, we need to get to it because it's getting late. I left at like nine this morning. It's already freaking three o'clock, so, or four o'clock. So anyway, let me get these parts out of the freaking hero. Almost called it a truck. Ben's making so much noise. I'm sorry, dude. I was just thinking about power strokes on 24. Yeah, I understand. It's one of those things. You just start, you start thinking about it, you can't stop thinking about it. I don't know why I walked out there with the camera because I gotta grab the stuff. 326 style wing that I really like. A lot of people said I should do a big wing. I'm not a huge fan of big wings. I think this style looks really good. And I think, like I said, I think the wing with the over fenders will really complement how low the rear bumper is and the new aggressive exhaust tip. So yeah, I guess let's, I ain't nothing left to it. But to do it, this is uh, one of those projects where you're cutting into a car, you're drilling into a car, so I always uh, always procrastinate a little bit before starting because it's like, there's no turning back once you start, so. All right, we got the fender all taped up. Got it as fit as best I could. Kind of show you guys the process with rib nutting and what it is, because a lot of people don't know what rib nuts are, but they are super handy. Once you start using them, you can't go back to not using rib nuts. They're like the best thing ever. I'll show you guys what they are. So, a rib nut is this guy. So, it's a, well here, so that you can see that, the profile inside threaded. So this part with the narrowing crushes and basically is like a rivet, so it mushrooms and then holds onto the backside of whatever material. And then you have a blind fastener, which means a threaded hole that you don't have to have a nut or a wrench on the backside. Super handy. Obviously, like you could nut and bolt this, but you probably couldn't get to most of the, the nuts on the backside. So this allows you to bolt it and unlike normal rivets, we can take them off. Or, you know, if one explodes and, and rips off, we can put another one on there, drill the holes, and mount it back up. Whereas, like, if it were rivets and it ripped off, you have to drill the rivets out, and then you gotta go up a size in rivets. So, I rib nut all the things. All the things. You guys have been watching back when we were building this car, you, you know. We used a lot of rib nuts on this build. So, anyway, I'm gonna get all my stuff set up. I'll show you guys kind of how I do it, my process for doing it. I have a way that I think is pretty quick, so. Let me, uh, let me get set up here. I'll show you guys what we're doing, how we're doing it. That's, that's more like it, how we're doing it, not what we're doing, you know what we're doing. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so we've got our cart converted to a rib nut workstation. We have our rib nut tool, which this opens up like that. And then when you, you can see that that extends. So when you close it, it pulls in and then it uh, mushrooms it. So. We got our rib nut tool, we got our rib nuts and bolts associated. I just run straight M6 by 10 rib nuts. That's like, I have just buckets of these and just, I have so much M6 by 10 hardware. First step, obviously you gotta know where you're gonna drill the hole. I'm not a super precise kind of guy, just not me. It's gonna look good enough, so we're just gonna kinda eyeball. We want them to look somewhat consistent across both sides and whatever, but we're not gonna go too crazy here. So anyway, first step, I get a drill bit that's a little bit bigger than the bolt I'm gonna use. So I drill through whatever piece I'm attaching and the piece it's attaching to with that bit. And I do that on however many I need, and then I take it off and then I enlarge that hole below. I know it's lined up because I drilled through both at the same time, and then I put the rib nut in and then put it back on, so. <laughs> I don't screw it up, because like I said, I'm not a very, uh, careful or methodical person when it comes to body stuff. So we're just gonna kind of hammer it out 
literally and metaphorically. So anyway, let's get to it. Well, apparently the first time lapse didn't record, so this is kind of the end of the first side, but I time lapsed the other side, so we'll go through that one and kind of how it's done, but we're just bolting it back on after we blew off all the chunks from drilling and all that stuff. All right, got the overfender completely bolted up. So that makes them super sturdy. Yeah, they got like barely any flex in them at all. Nice and rock solid. So now that that's mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the other side and get that part over with and then do the cutting at one time because I've got to get completely different tools and stuff out to cut and I got to get the welder set up and all that. So I might as well just get both mounted and then move on to cutting. That's the nice thing about riv nuts. Mounting them isn't a definitive thing. It's not like once we rivet them on there, they're on there. We can just take the bolts out and take them back off. So, oh, but I guess here real quick, they're not super definitive compared to like other cars that get overs, but side with the over, side without the over. No over, over. One more, over, no over. It definitely looks even less different on my car because my fenders are pulled so hard. Like they are pulled probably 20, 30 mil, maybe even more. So they're already kind of flared out like the over fender is. So, the over fender is not like a huge change. We maybe gained, I don't know, an inch or so down here, something like that. Anyway, back to work. All right, so first step is to tape them in place. So I try to use the tape to get them squished down as good as I can, but it, it's hard to get a fiberglass piece to bend just using tape. So get it kind of as close as you can. You can see that one side popped up. I got to retape it, but basically you just got to keep that in mind when we're doing it. We got to make sure that it doesn't shift on us. So now we're drilling the hole for the bolt. So this is the smaller hole. We're just going to go through and drill all our holes. I'm just kind of referencing the other side to get a general idea of where I need the bolt. Then we come through, blow it off, enlarge the holes for our rib nuts, and then start slamming our rib nuts in. This is probably the most time consuming part is just threading the rib nut onto the tool and then unthreading the tool off the rib nut. But it goes super, super quick and now we're just bolting it up and we're done. Ta-da! We got the other side on. I kind of messed it up and it's bowed up here. So I'm gonna have to open this hole up some so that it can slide over a little bit, but it's almost there. It's almost good. Uh, and I ran out of Allen bolts, which I kind of knew was gonna happen. So I just used Hex head 10 mils for now. I'll order some more Allens and then we can bolt it back up with Allens. So not a big deal. Would look terrible if you actually did this though. <laughs> oh my God, that would look so bad. So anyway, it's on. We got both overfenders on. Really didn't take long at all. I mean, I guess the longest part is gonna be cutting it. So it's not like we're done, but they're on. Definitely looks nice and wider. It is a little hard to tell because the car is dark and there's not a lot of light on it, but be able to see more when we get her out in the sun. So now I want to do the wing. I want to get that done so that cutting is the last thing we have to do. So that's my plan. It's going to be a little tricky because it bolts from the bottom and then these are at an angle. So they're not like right on top of each other. So I'm going to have to basically do something to mark the holes so that we get them in the right spot, drill through the trunk and then bolt them up. Cause obviously if we mess it up, then We'll either have to drill another hole and try to cover it or it just won't be good. So obviously we want to try to get this right the first time. So we're going to devise a plan, try to figure it out. Once our holes are marked and drilled, obviously it's just putting two bolts in with washers. So that, I mean, that part's easy. It's getting the holes in the right spot. I'm not very good at that. I'm not very good at that at all. Ooh, ooh. So I taped it up so that we could mark on it. We went and marked where you know, both spots of where it's going to sit. But yeah, I think that's about it. So now what we're going to do to mark our drill holes, now that we know where it needs to be and we have an outline, is we're going to put bolts in the bottom and then put some paint on the head of the bolts and then set it down. And hopefully that'll give us our marks because these lines, you know, like the Sharpie, it's hard to get it right on the edge. They're not going to be accurate enough to like measure over and measure down and then mark our holes. So we're going to try it that way. Wish us luck. Hopefully we don't screw it up, which is uh, very likely. Because like I said, I'm terrible at this. I'm so terrible at drilling holes in the right spot, even when I have really easy way to mark them. So see what happens. All right, we got our bolts in. Got them adjusted to the same-ish kind of sort of height. So now we're gonna do a little trick if you don't have paint, paint, like I never do. Take some spray paint, which is back here. Find a good one. This should be good. So you spray it in the cap and then it'll get wet and it'll be like 
I don't know, like nail polish or like bucket paint or whatever. So we're gonna do spray it in the cap. Bucket paint, I don't know, wet paint, not not aerosol paint. So spray it in the cap, Q tip, apply, center, set. So the hard part's gonna be getting this about where it needs to be and then setting it down in one shot without like smearing it all over. So yeah, we are we are expert body work people. This is why We're I never I never do this kind of stuff. Cars. We're good at some stuff. Not most stuff, but some stuff. All right, wish us luck. Well, we managed to get the wing on. It's a bit of a struggle, but we got it on. Our method halfway worked. Didn't really leave enough paint, but good enough. I like it. I definitely needed something back here. It is a little ricey, but I, I like it. I definitely like it. I think it makes the rear look a little less awkward with just a crazy rear bumper. Yeah, there's another couple angles of her. It looks cooler from the front, in my opinion. Really, the main thing that's killing it right now is the rear wheels. They're like sunk in and they're not like hot boy flashy. If we had the three piece wheels in the rear and they were like fitting nice, I think it would really, and the rear is sitting higher than it normally does because it just came off the lift. So I think those couple things too are making it look a little funky because the rears are like sunk in and super monster truck, but I like it, I like it. I wanted to do this for a while to add something to the rear. I don't like big wings, so this is a good wing that I would like. I know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Anyway, we're gonna push it back in and uh, get these fenders off and start cutting up the body. Uh, well, I tried to mark it, but it wasn't really working. But basically, there's a roof in here, basically the inner fender well and the top of it. So we're only gonna cut up to like where the top of that is. And we're cutting the outer skin. So the inner skin is, will still be there. And what we can do is fold it up and weld it up to here. So that way, if our tire is flush with our over fender, it can still travel all the way up to the roof of the wheel well. If you were to leave it like this, you couldn't run any more aggressive of the tire because it would still hit. So yeah, we're not gonna go crazy. I know some people when they put overs, they'll cut like this whole thing out, but usually those are like tube chassis cars or like tube rear cars where they're adding in support and doing a bunch of other stuff. This is a stock chassis car, no tube front, no tube rear. Um, so there's no reason to go that crazy. Plus the weight savings are, are negligible. So yeah, that's my plan. Did I mention the part about uh, procrastinating on cutting into my stock body car? I guess it's already got rib nuts in it. So there's, there's already no turning back. So, you know, it's just, it's, just, uh, it's just one of those things. It's tough to get yourself to do it. So backing it up, taking the wheels off, cutting into it. Let's do it, let's get it. If you're gonna be running a grinder or a saw or something for a long period of time, wear earplugs. It will save your life, trust me. My ears suck because I worked in a shop for a long time cutting stuff and grinding stuff and it'll mess your ears up. I've got a line marked, like I said, it's kind of hard to see. Oh yeah, oh, also, it's a good thing we're doing over fenders because this is all paint damage from me blowing a tire up. And then this is all, this is from me hitting Zach. So this rear quarter is already pretty toast and the roll is never very good. They're pretty bacony. So this is definitely something that needed to get done one way or the other. Uh, we just gotta be adults now and not pop our tires when they're about to pop. We just gotta stop. Okay guys, we just gotta learn how to do that. <laughs> it's just so fun to pop tires, but now we'll explode a fender. So we can't really do that. Yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna wing it. Hope for the best. Push me off. try to cut through it. it just makes it easier path to follow all right my tentative plan is to now cut ow I'm an idiot metal splinter slash paper cut and don't rub your finger around metal that's 
step one. <laughs> okay, so anyway, tentative plan, cut in here. Try to cut the outer skin off and then we can start figuring out how to get this skin folded up and welded back to the uh, quarter panel here. All right, so here is where we're at. Basically, this is our inner fender liner, our metal inner fender liner. This is our outer skin. So we got our outer skin cut off. My best plan is to pizza cut this, like basically just cut a bunch of slits in it so then we can bend it up. So actually, maybe I'll try to hammer first. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna devise a plan and I'll tell you guys the plan. All right, so I decided to go with the pizza cuts. I'm gonna try to hammer these up and then maybe I'll cut them off a little bit off of where they meet and then burp weld that and then we'll have to seal it up in here a little bit too but should be able to get it most of the way sealed that way so i don't know i gotta see what happens when i hammer them first so i'll do that and i'll report back well this is what i came up with i trimmed them back some i left these a little long because there's a lot of support right here so basically what i do is i'd hammer hammer it up like that and then hammer from the bottom and get it to to scoot up more and then I figured out where to cut it, I cut it and hammered them both all up some more, got a little more out of them. And then now I'm about happy with it. So I'm gonna clean up all the edges and just try to weld as much as I can, see if I can weld without adding much material, if I can just fill these gaps. It's gonna look terrible, but should be sealed up. So I'm just gonna go at it with a good old MIG gun and uh, see what we can come up with. I know my glasses are always falling down. Trust me, I know. I wanna get contacts so when I get sweaty, my freaking glasses don't fall off my face because it is so annoying. Okay, let's get to welding. Alrighty, I got this side welded up. I was gonna just weld it completely, but it kept setting on fire. There's not a lot you can do with a fully built car like this, like with everything in it, the chassis not stripped down and all that stuff. It just, you know, the sparks are going inside, the cavity in here and trying to set stuff on fire. The paint's catching on fire. So I welded up all the gaps in between which is the main area where smoke's gonna get in. And I tack these up here. So I'm gonna just smooth this out and then I'll either come back with like panel bond or something, or I don't know. I already have a decent bit of smoke that gets in the car, so I prefer not to have a ton more. It feels cool the first couple times, but then it gets real annoying when you're just like breathing smoke and you can't see because there's so much smoke in your car. So anyway, we're trying to minimize smoke. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and grind this down and uh, probably call it good for now. If we have issues, then we'll come back and fiberglass over it or something I don't know I don't know terms of things like this bondo bondo panel bond something like that you guys get what I'm trying to say right right okay all right well this side's pretty well wrapped up it's really not too terrible I mean it's pretty atrocious but it gets the job done the wheel won't hit it well it'll hit the top here before it hits it so we're good there that is all finished. So we need to flip the car around and do the other side so I don't have to pull the welder all the way out there. But it is getting a little late and neighbor Al needs his beauty sleep. You know, it's really important that neighbor Al gets his beauty sleep. So I don't wanna be out here grinding away for another hour or two. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it tonight. We'll pick this back up in the morning, finish it up and be done with it. So I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, we are done. The LS Miata is finished. She's looking snazzy. Obviously it's really high right now because we had her jacked up, but uh, won't really settle until we get some driving in, but I like it. I like it. The freaking exhaust tip, the wing, like it, it looks so good. It suits it. I didn't do anywhere near as good of a job on this side cutting and welding as I did the other side. I cut a little too high and then folding the pieces up, there are bigger gaps and it was just kind of a mess. So I didn't even bother showing you guys that atrocity. Just imagine the other side, but way worse. So, yeah, but I mean, it's done. We're finished up. We definitely have some other stuff we need to do to this car here soon. I gotta figure out my power steering when I was turning it around, it's like kind of notchy. I'm gonna take that filter out, put a barb fitting in there and see what happens. It's just kind of kind of weird. I think since we're not going to Texas and we're not trying to get the car done for, we, we would have had to leave this morning. Uh, but since we're not going to Texas, I think I'm gonna try to do the electric steering, get that figured out. Um, or make, at least make up my mind and start getting the parts to do something other than this stock pump situation. Cause it's just, it's not working out for me very well. I'm tired of swapping pumps and I'm tired of worrying about it and it being, you know, something that could take me out of competing after I drive a thousand miles to Texas. So luckily we made it through the last two rounds without, you know, it taking us out, but I just, I want to get it figured out. I don't like dealing with 
stuff like that where we're just having to band-aid it over and over again. So anyway, at least it looks better now. We gotta give her a wash, but it's freaking raining. So it's kind of ruining my plans to start on my truck today, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. But that is gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I will see you next time. Goodbye.